Folks, they are asleep in Sochi, so all eyes here in Ottawa, where in one hour, Finance Minister Jim Flaherty will deliver budget 2014. But CBC News has already learned some of what the budget could include. There have been leaks. This is now par for the course these days. Take a look at what we are watching out for right now. One, closing the Canada-U.S. price gap, so-called country price that the government laid out this priority in its throne speech last fall. Jim Flaherty says it's still top of the agenda. That could mean dropping tariffs and importing taxes on goods made outside of Canada. More rules for charities. Jim Flaherty has said tightening rules will help put a stop to what he says terrorist organizations who are laundering money through charities. Power and Politics has already reported that several environmental charities on a different matter are being audited by Revenue Canada. Look out for uh, something on that. Also support for youth employment. The government is expected to include some money for uh, internships and apprenticeships. There's a growing youth unemployment issue. Expanding broadband, uh, broadband internet. CBC has learned the budget will include money to extend high-speed internet access to about 280,000 households and businesses in rural and remote areas. Sources telling me about $300 million over a number of years for that. Funding for infrastructure also expected. Last year the budget uh, promised $53 billion over 10 years for infrastructure. This year's budget could include more details about where that money could go. Detroit Windsor Bridge, Champlain Bridge, look out for that. CBC has also learned that the government will signal new support for Canadian automakers in budget 2014 as a way to keep car plants and auto sector jobs in Canada. Look for some money to a Chrysler plant in Windsor, Ontario. Also, sources saying that there might be money for sports. Hey, it's in the middle of the Olympics. Don't be surprised to hear about sports. I'm also hearing from some sources that maybe the food industry, the fast food industry, might see some changes to the temporary foreign workers uh, rules around that. They've been calling for that. And you always look for clues here on Budget Day. Outside Jim Flaherty's office, I walked by and there was all these kind of Tim Hortons fast food stuff. So I, you know, I'm trying to read the tea leaves, as it were, on that. But you never know. We'll wait for another hour. Let's uh, try to read the tea leaves with three MPs. This is what we're doing now. The name of the game is speculation. Uh, joining me now is James Rajad, an uh, Alberta Conservative MP and the chair of the Standing Committee on Finance. Beside him is Murray Rankin, the NDP MP from BC, and Dominic LeBlanc, the Liberal House Leader. Good to see all of you. Good to see you. I kind of like this day. This is exciting. The country Very tunes exciting. in to watch how, you know, almost $240 billion of taxpayer money is being spent. Um, James or John, I know you've seen the budget. I know you can't talk about the budget. I just read the budget. I, when did you become the finance minister? <laughs> you've obviously seen it too. Oh, yeah. Well, tell me, I mean, how this is what has been leaked out. I mean, how close are we to the, the fundamental themes that we're going to see here? Well, obviously, I mean, I mean, as you know, I can't talk about any of the specifics of the budget, but I think you can look at some general themes uh, going forward and based on what's been done in the past. I mean, obviously, uh, continuing transfers for health care, education, increasing those at 6%, 3% per year, increasing funding for social services to the problems, transfers for payments to persons, for old age pensions, for uh, family benefits, those will continue. But continuing to tighten our belts on the $70 billion of discretionary federal spending, that's how we're moving to a balanced budget to next year. I fully expect Minister Flaherty to say we're staying the course and on track to balance our budget next year. Uh, when you say staying the course, the opposition will say that is, that's a euphemism for do nothing. And they'll point to a page, this is last year's budget, it says, uh, page 284, and if you look at uh, budget measures, it says zero, zero, zero. In other words, there's very little spending. Is that is this a do-nothing budget? Absolutely not. In fact, I just re-emphasize continuing increased transfers for the basic programs like health care, education, for job training, for research and development, focusing on priority areas. But at the same time, that $70 billion of federal discretionary spending, you know, reducing those budgets by about 7% so that we can, in fact, reach a balanced budget at the same time as fund Canadians' priorities. All right, Murray Anker, what do you want to see in this budget? I want to see some action. I don't want another do-nothing budget. I don't want a bunch of zeros like you talked about in the last budget. I want to see some serious measures to help families who are hurting. I want youth unemployment to be addressed aggressively. Their unemployment rate is almost twice that of ordinary Canadians, which is still not good enough. I but want to see hearing the... that will be addressed. Well, I, hope so. I hope so. We'll be watching. Because so many young people, Evan, you know, are underemployed. They're working in part-time jobs. They're not working to their potential and this government has an obligation to help those people rather than just talking the line about austerity austerity and not helping Canadian families get back on their feet. What do you want to see Donna Cabral? Uh, 
Kevin, you used the 000 line. I'm not sure if that chart was the infrastructure spending. But one of the other charts in last year's budget, uh, in a moment of rare honesty, the government admitted that in a $53 billion infrastructure program, very little money would be available for the next three or four years. It was entirely back-end loaded. We've heard from mayors and municipal councillors across the country that it's a bit dishonest to say we're going to announce a multi-billion dollar infrastructure program over 10 years, but none of the money will be available until well after the next federal election. For the people who are worried about urban transit congestion, highways in Atlantic Canada that are not allowing good